We are sons of God. How many here have ever had a little baby son? Moms and dads, you all had a little baby son. Now, did you take your little baby son two, three weeks old and put him behind the wheel of the car? Come on. Did you take your little adolescent boy, seven, eight years old, and put him behind the wheel of the car? If you did, you're a fool. You're a fool. Unless you had an environment like I had, I was raised on a dairy farm, I started driving machinery when I was seven years old. Yes. And it was a learning process. I was so short, I had to hold the steering wheel, <laughs> scoot off the seat. My butt wasn't even on the seat, it was here, the edge of the seat, to push the clutch in to reach the brakes. It scared to death. But I had to grow. Are you with me? Yes. See, God is saying here in Galatians, He's travailing. Don't don't think you have never travailed in rearing children other than just the birthing process. Well, that is the truth. That is the truth. Remember 1 John 3? Now we are the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. Go ahead. We should be like him. But when we should see him, we should be like him. Now. When? Now. <laughs> see, we always want to go back. It's so easy to go back to what's familiar. Yeah. To go back to the natural. Yeah. I want to progress here. That's good. That's good. We want to go back to the natural because it's comfortable. It's unchallenging. There's no conflict. That's good stuff. Yes. There's no conflict. He says until Christ be formed. What is Christ? Christ formed. Turn again to first John. I want to stay in the book and hit the scriptures. Let's turn to chapter 2 of 1 John. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Chapter 2, 1 John. Verse 20 and 27. Or well, 20, 21, 27. But you have an unction. You have an anointing. That anointing came in a seed form. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. I need to say something right there on that. Mm -hmm. The fullness of God came even though in our consciousness it was a seed. It was the full DNA mm -hmm. of the Father placed within your recreated spirit. Mm -hmm. And with your recreated spirit He gave you his spirit. The paraclete. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did you receive? We received everything that you will ever need in this life and beyond. You have received more than enough for yourself and your children and your children's children to a thousand generations and beyond. God doesn't play around. There's no earning this. It is a free gift. It is a free gift. The anointing. 
And in this anointing from the Holy One, it says, and you know some things. Oh. Uh, that's a typographical error. We need to correct the Word of God. You know a little bit. No. Oh. Oh. I'm, I'm making a point in a ludicrous manner because you need to get it. More than that, it needs to get you. Yes. Yes. Come on. Amen. You need to get, it needs to get you. We want to stick our head into the things of the anointing. We want to stick this hard drive into God's business and bring interpretation that we think that we have learned so much truth that it's got to be my way or it's no way. Let me give you a case in point. Years ago, back in the early 80s, I ran into a brother that I had taken by the unction of God, by the leading and the knowing of the Holy Spirit to help him get started in ministry. And all of a sudden, he disappeared. And the next thing I know, he got married to this young lady who was involved in a certain Pentecostal movement. And, he, and I ran into him in Kmart and he said, Brother Bob, he said, you're not saved if you're not baptized this way. <laughs> Case in point. I'm not going into names, right, right. but I think you get the point. Mm -hmm. Sticking your head into the anointing and you determining the outcome yes. sets division within yourself yes. and it also projects that division to those that you come in contact with. Yes. God says, get your head out. I'm canceling out the DNA of the hard drive that you received at birth and conception from your Adamic nature. But you have been born again from on high at the DNA that is complete and total and perfect that is of God. I have anointed you and deposited in seed form and you know all things. I didn't write this. You got a Bible? Anybody here following in the Bible? Yes. What's your scripture say? Somebody help me here. Yes. Oh, somebody read. Did you? Are you got it in the Bible? It says, "Beloved, now we are the sons of God. It do it not appear." No. First no. John two twenty. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. How many things? All things. How many things? All things. How many things? All things. Not about this life. You know all things about? All things. <laughs> all things of what? Of God. Of God. Amen. Let's go down to verse 20, 21. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth. Truth is not based in our concepts and perceptions and our perspectives of what we think God is. But truth is based on the Word with the Spirit in a perfect marriage, a perfect union, not trying to separate and divide it. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth. The truth will never come to light within you until you cancel this. Oh. And discern with this. And but because you know it and that no lie is of the truth. Jesus said in John 14, 6, what did He say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Boy, we know that scripture. Do you know it? No, I'm not being facetious. I want to provoke you in the Holy Ghost to go back and look at things that we have learned in patterns. 
And the patterns develop from here and not from here unless you've matured and overcome this and are open <coughs> to see what God is saying in the pureness of light. Thank you, God. So I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it. Guess what? You're already possessed with it. Let's go to verse 27. But the anointing which you have received of him comes and goes in you. It is active when I feel the anointing. Well, I don't feel God. I don't see that in this verse. I'm being brother facetious. I told you about the stones and the rocks. We haven't got to the, to the real crux yet. But the anointing which you have received of Him comes and goes in you. No, it abides in you. It abides. That means it lives in you. John 14, 23 says, And if any man love, love me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come and make our abode or our abiding place yes. in Him. Yeah. In the, who's the Him? It's the sons <laughs> that are seated in the Son. Where's God's abiding place? Yes. Right here. Yes. I don't pray to God off in heaven somewhere. Uh -oh. And yet... <laughs> The anointing comes down and it comes out. Last night, when we were when we had a shift in the in the in the message for about 40 some minutes, it shifted. A demonstration of the spirit began to become prominent in my spirit, and God wanted to demonstrate with power. Did he demonstrate with power? Are you just being nice or is that the truth? <laughs> no, I, come on. Now this is serious business. This is about discipleship. This is about the truth. How many bore witness within your own spirit that the power and demonstration of the Spirit was in this place last night? And it touched you. Yes. 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 